Hello everyone, welcome to the online video tutorial series of Computer Network Circuit. In this video, I will cover unit number one, Introduction to Computer Network and Internet. The previous video of this particular unit, in that I will already cover first two topics, that is all about Introduction to Computer Network and Understanding of Network and Internet. Now, in this video, I will cover the next topic that is all about the network age. So, first we just recap what, uh, what is computer network. So, when we are talking about the computer network, it's simply masses, start, masses transferring between two parties over the network. So, we are, when we are talking about the two parties that is client and server, then how they are behaving, how they are reacting before communication, that is all about the network age. When we are talking about the age of any in real time scenario, age that means the end point. So when we are talking about the computer network, so network established using wired or wireless, it may be your fiber optic or coaxial cable, or it might be your Wi-Fi connection. But when we are talking about the connection at the at both the point and the point, some parties are available. If we are talking about the two end points, that is all about the network gates. So, network gates is defines the computers on the network use at the edge, or we can say that is the end of the network. These computers are known as a host or end system. So, that host and end systems can be client or server. So, how they are reacting in background process for that particular two design models are used client server network and peer to peer network so let's understand both the models of computer network system client server and peer to peer so first move to our model that is all about the client server network so when we are talking about the client server network one centralized server is that you can see in the figure the particular centralized server is available and number of devices is connected with that particular server that can that is host or we can say that if that is our client so in the client server network it is a one system where one or more computers called client one or more computers are our that that is known as a client connected with one centralized computer that is our centralized computer that is named as a server for the purpose of sharing of information or resources so one dedicated centralized server and number of hosts are available that is the scenario of our client server network so what is the advantages of this type of client server network so when we are talking about the client server network so first advantage are all about the server system holds the shared files in organization if you are talking about the printers so if we are allocated allocated each and every person a printer then the cost will be on the higher side instead of that what we are trying to do what printer is there and in the particular printer we are put that resources as a shared system with the help of server communication then our cost will be on the downside so we can say that it is a it is an advantage then the server system can be scheduled so we can for the scheduled backup so automatically what happened backup will be generated of our system then the server system is a kind of central repository of sharing the printer to what i already discussed about that next is all about internet access email routing all that particular task of network is is efficiently handled by a particular server so what happened if the server handled properly then our all the communication, our whole network will be reliably working. But when we are talking about the disadvantages, then when we are talking about the disadvantages, then the implementation. First, first time our implementation will be become expensive. Next is all about the network operating system is essential here because when we are talking about server, then server operating system, that server operating system must configure and that type of operating system must be purchased first time and the biggest disadvantage is that if the server fails then entire network will be crashed so we are totally dependent on the server system if the server is failed then 
all other system cannot share that particular resources. So how can we remove this type of disadvantage of client server network? That's why we are moving to our second model. That model is our peer-to-peer -peer network. So when we are talking about the peer-to-peer -peer network, in that number of computers are connected with each other. Too simple. Our purpose is for sharing the information and resources. But here, where is the client and where is the server? There is no central server. Here. Each and every machines are used as a client as well as a server. So in network, number of computers, number of devices are connected with each other and every machines are behaving like a client and server both. When it requests for the data, it behaves like a client. If it generates some, it generates it or it gives the response to any system, then it behaves like a server. So, in short, if we are talking, talking about the peer-to-peer -peer network, there is no central central location of server for authenticating user, storing file, or accessing resources. Each of them work as a client and server independently. So, when we are talking about these advantages of that, so we can easily set up no need of committed server here. Network implementation is easy, easy and cheap as compared to centralized server. But if we are talking about the disadvantages of peer-to-peer -peer network, then the speed of network is decreased as compared to centralized one because each and every machines are connected with each other. It is not easy to keep track information. So which computer is sharing which particular machine, which computer is sharing which devices, each the tracking of whole location, the tracking of whole data transfer is not easy to maintain as compared to client server. Next is there is no central backup here. So here each and every machines having the responsibility to generate that backup. And the security is also concerned because here number of devices are connected with each other. So number of connection establishments are more than the client server. So this is the basic idea how peer-to-peer -peer network is working. Now we are moving to the techniques which are used for the communication. If we are talking about client server, if we are talking about peer-to-peer, -peer, but here if you are talking about the data communication between between two endpoints, the endpoints are client or server, how the data is communicated. For that, basically, we are using two communication methods. First method is connection oriented, and second is all about the connection based method. So when we are talking about the connection oriented method, it is all about the reliable data transfer. And if we are talking about the connection list, it is a Unreliable. How reliable and unreliable we will discuss now. So when we are talking about the connection oriented method, so connection oriented communication includes the steps of setting up call from one computer to another computer. Then is transmit the data and then releasing the call. Simply it is a like a phone call. If you want to call to someone then first our call will establish, then receiver is picking the call. Then you realize that my connection is established, then communication is completed, and then you are end the call. So here what happened? There is one reliability that your communication is completely performed. But if you are talking about the reverse side, if you are sending the text, what happened? You have the receiver phone number. You are just uh, editing your text and send that message to a particular person. But if you are not getting the delivery report, then what happens? There is no surety that that particular message is received or not. So that is a two different side of the communication. First is connection oriented, where the reliability is there. That is the example of phone call. So what the exactly task will be performed in this manner? So connection oriented communication is done in one of the two ways over package switch network. That is without virtual circuit and fit virtual circuits. So let's understand both the terminologies one by one. So first we understand without virtual circuit. So here only when we are talking about without virtual circuit, what happened? The only two machines over the internet, what they are connected about the connection 
and which is the established between two computers. The internet itself, the router, the links having no information of presence of connection between two computers. So what the connection, suppose my X and Y source and destination is available. So when the connection is established in first step of connection oriented, both the parties are know the route from which data is communicated. Only two parties, no other any parties like the internet itself, intermediate routers, links are not aware how the data is transferring from source to destination. That is all about the without virtual circuit. Now next is with virtual circuit. So in with virtual circuit, the router within the network route all the packets from source to destination. So when source is wants to send the data to the destination, what happened? Source is telling the inter intermediate router that this is my destination, I want to go there. Then what happened next? That router is managing all these routes. What is the uh, what is the biggest advantage if we are choosing this particular line? Because the router itself know which route is best, which route is optimal. So the router will decide the next route if we are choosing the with virtual circuit method. The advantage is that if you end voice topics are easier to carry because route are reserve the memory space for the buffer for the transmission. Now we are moving to the next method that is all about the connection list method. So when we are talking about the connection list method, it is just packets which in when no call establishment or no call release. Just we are doing the transferring of the data and believing that at the destination my data is successfully received. So message is broken into the packets. Each packet transferred separately here. And here what happened? That packet can travel also a different route to reach the destination. So in connectionless service, it is typically provided by which protocol? That is a UDP protocol that is supported by our transport layer. So UDP is also called a datagram protocol. So here in that particular method of connection list, we are not guaranteed that our data is successfully received or not. So when we are talking about the connection oriented, then connection is first established, then data is transferred and connection is released. So TCP, transmission control protocol that is supported by our transport layer is the example of connection oriented method. Now let's understand the connection oriented versus connection list method. So when we are talking about the difference, just we have to use these particular features. First is how the data is trapped. So here, at is a particular connection oriented time, data is in the packet format when we are talking about the connection layer, then we are talking about the connection oriented, that is the continuous stream of the data. If you are talking about the route, which is followed by connection oriented and connection layers, so connection layers is not following any rule where connection oriented is following the route whether it is using virtual circuit or not. Are the resources received in network? So resource is not received by the connection layers when the connection resource is reserved by our connection oriented. The next also difference is, is regarding to our connection oriented in list with regarding reserved a communication host. So we can say that it is not about the connection layers where the connection oriented is reserving that. Next is all about the connection establishment. So yes, connection oriented method is establishing connection, but connection list method is not establishing the connection. Next is what is the impact of router or switch here? So when we are talking about the connection oriented, there is the no role of router because already the route is established by the two source here. When we are talking about the connection list, it is uh, dedicated by our connection list service. So this is all about the connection oriented and connection list method. So in this video, I briefly explain about the our network edge. Network edge is that is the endpoint that will be provided by our client server or peer to me peer model. And I also discuss about the communication mode that will be provided by our computer network system. So this is all about today's video. Thank you for watching.